Hey Nathan, it's Monday, September 14th. Your last video was so awesome. It is so fun to get to talk about new discoveries, especially ones made in our field of study. Nathan, one huge reason why you and I studied anthropology in school was because we love learning about the differences and similarities amongst humans. In studying cultural anthropology, we understand how people who live their lives very differently than we do still enjoy the same pleasures that we do. In linguistic anthropology, we learn how people who speak the same language and even live in the same region can still sound drastically different from each other. And in studying our distant past, we learn how us humans, while we, we have come a long way, we're not quite so different from our ancestors. Nathan, your Friday video covered a lot of the Homo Naledi discovery, but you told me you felt as if you couldn't fit everything into it that you wanted to. So today I'm gonna cover some of the research that shows the differences and similarities that we share with our ancient ancestors. We'll start with the physical characteristics. The Naledi were a species of smaller structure, averaging in a height of around four feet, 11 inches. The male's a little taller, female's a little shorter, and weighing in around 100 pounds. These guys were fully bipedal, like we are, which is a very important trait in the evolution of humans, allowing them to carry food or babies or whatever while walking. Like you mentioned, Nathan, certain aspects of the Naledi body are similar to Australopithecines, the Homo genus precursor, like their hips, their uh, upper body, and their cranial volume. But other potentially more important characteristics are more homo-like, like their hands, feet, and their cranial structure. So this mix of similarities between Australopithecus and the rest of the homo genus kind of lends to the scientist's reasoning of dating Naledi to be three million years ago, to be so old, and as the oldest species in our genus. But one of the coolest aspects of this discovery is not how the Naledi looked, but what they did. So all the bones found in the cave were Naledi, except for like an owl bone or something. Now, the bones didn't appear in that cave all at once. They appeared in there over time. They weren't brought in there by some kind of predator, and they also did not somehow fall in there. The bones were put there purposefully, like buried, you could say. This has anthropologists all in a titter, and it makes sense why. The only previous evidence of intentional burial were by Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. So like, you know, the most recent peeps. It is speculated by the team that excavated and studied these fossils that the repeated process of burying bodies deep inside this cave would have required a lot of effort because the caves are so extensive and dark and that it would indicate symbolic thought. Of course, there is further research to do. Dating of the fossils can begin now that the paper has been published and they've been studied extensively. And Nathan, like you said, they must be compared with other fossils to see how quite exactly they fit into our lineage of human heritage. How do you narwhals feel about this discovery and the significance of the fact that these people from three million years ago may have been burying their dead. I know you guys have been commenting a lot on Nathan's last video. Let's keep commenting there, but also bring the conversation to the comments below. And Nathan, we'll see you on Wednesday. Also, Narwhals, I was going to mention, if this discovery is something that really excites you, PBS Nova made a documentary about it called Dawn of Humanity, which they just put up on their website, and they're going to broadcast, I think, this Thursday the 16th. So let me know if you watch it in the comments below and what you think about it. And while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and click thumbs up and subscribe if, if you haven't.